this is another video to help you prepare for your ISA. Here we're going to be looking at different types of errors. You may get a question that asks you um, to think about errors in your practical. If you hadn't thought, if you haven't thought about this before you sit down to do your section two paper, it can be um, one that does require quite a lot of thought and it may throw you. So while you're doing your practical, I'd just like you to keep in the back of your mind, has anything gone wrong? How could we improve this? How could we make it better? Um, any problems that you had setting up the practical, just have that playing in the back of your mind so that if the question does come up in section two, you can be ready for it. Now, a common mistake that um, people do when using measuring cylinders is not looking um, in the correct place. So this is the meniscus of the liquid in the measuring cylinder. And if you're standing up when you look at it, you're actually going to be reading it at a higher level than if you're getting down onto eye level with the meniscus. And this could be a source of error in your experiments. So you could get um, a question asking you what type of error you came across in your experiment. Um, so there are several that you need to know about. So this is a zero error. Um, you could have a set of scales uh, which you don't zero or tear before you use them. They could already have a negative or a positive number on them. And it's zero error because when you think it's zero, it's not actually zero. So when zero is being measured, it's actually recording a value, which is wrong. You can have this on a set of scales or it can be on a ruler, which doesn't start at zero. But when you're measuring things, it does start at zero. So, for example, this ruler should be measuring from here up to here. Another type of error is a systematic error, error and these are quite problematic because all of the data looks as if it's in the same place. So it's a problem with every single bit of data, whereas they should all be clustered nicely down here. There could be a problem with the environment or there could be a problem with the equipment, which means all of the data is clustered up here. Just doing repeats won't get rid of this type of error. What you're going to need to do is get a new technique, a new method or get some new equipment. Unfortunately, sometimes this does happen in science and you just have to chalk it up to one of those things and move on to the next day. Now, a random error. These are more likely to happen in your practical. What you can do about this is if you do more experiments, if you do a larger number of repeats, you start to see a pattern where all the results become clustered in the same place. And you can see that these ones here are clearly the anomalies because they're in a different place to the other ones. So for this, you can do more results, you can get a better average and you're going to have less error. And then the last one, probably the most common type of error that will happen in your practical is human error. We are all humans. We do make mistakes virtually every single day. Um, this is just can be repeated. Um, if you can repeat the experiments, you're going to eliminate human error. This could be something like not paying attention in practical. It could be not stopping the stopwatch quick enough or it could be not measuring things properly.